So hello dear friends, well, I welcome you all for this uh, humble sharing of our cases. So we'll be sharing a series of cases which, we, which are solved on PM basis. So this is a beginning of how to see uh, cases in a different light. <clears throat> So I welcome you all on behalf of our team, which is Team IPEMA. So this is a case which is <clears throat> solved by PEM method. Uh, and this is a series in <clears throat> view of sharing our cases on behalf of International Person Evolution Model Association. So very, very warm welcome to you all. And thank you for your enthusiasm in this new method. <clears throat> so this is personal evolution method. The founder is Dr. Mahesh Gandhi. This method aims to treat cases by <clears throat> working out the inner age of a person. So we believe in PEM model that each one of us st is stuck at one level of evolution one level of inner age and that is where we struggle and that is where we uh, found, find issues and that is where is our growth. <clears throat> so every disease is there to make us grow at some certain point. So that takes us from ease to dis-ease. <clears throat> so today I'll be sharing this case of pornography addiction. So the problem itself was such that you know it 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 seemed initially that it this will be a difficult case for me but how with personal evolution model i was able to understand each and every line of the case so that is the beauty of this method that initially we could not understand why the person is speaking such language from where this is coming so now with this method we understand each and every line that how the person is stuck and it is how the person is coming out with these lines and with these words. Even the choice of the words comes from that level of evolution. So this is a male, 26 years. <clears throat> he completed BSc, filmmaking, and he said that I am addicted to porn. And he says, I'm so guilty. I feel that I'm such a bad person. So his voice was also very, uh, he was like a beaten person. It showed that he has beaten himself so much for this addiction. And he's, he, it took him some time to come to me. He says, I've been coming to you with my mom since childhood for the mom's treatment. I've thought hundred times that I should discuss this issue with you, but I couldn't. So finally, today I'm here to discuss this with you. So he says, it feels that I'm cursed with this vice. <clears throat> this is very, very disturbing. I'm not able to accept this part of me. So he says, I've beaten myself down since years. This, this vice has wasted my years. So he says, I'm carrying this child guilt since childhood. <clears throat> he says, that I have misbehaved with my maid's daughter in childhood too. I want to confess something. How do I come out of this problem? I have been struggling with these vices. It's been years. I feel bad about myself. I cannot share it with anyone. So he says he has done something wrong with his maid's daughter in his childhood and that is the guilt he's carrying since childhood. <clears throat> the way he sounded 
I had to convince him it is okay that it's done in childhood, it's done, but you have to come out of it. You have to grow out of this. But he sounded so guilty. He was so guilty about the fact that the feeling he gave me that he has done some sexual abuse or ra rape with the daughter of the maid in childhood. <clears throat> so I asked, because of Okay, so this guilt he has been carrying since childhood that he has done something wrong with the maid's daughter. So I had to ask him exactly what you did because I had to convince him to come out of this guilt. Initially, he came just for counseling. He says, I asked her to show your private parts and that was when he was in his very formative years. He was very young at that time, around eight to 10 years. He says he, she used to come with her, the maid and uh, she used to play around while her mother was working. And even my mother was working. So I was free and we were alone. So he said, I just asked her to show the private parts. So th this was such a naive thing, which he did. I think which in this age group, most of the people, they have this curiosity of seeing this. So I had to convince him that this is not such a big guilt, but he was not ready to accept that fact. He says, since childhood, I had these sexual urges and I used to take a pillow and act as if I'm in a sexual act. But I have always imagined myself to be a female. So these are this was the language which I had never heard before. Or this is this was the first time I was experiencing somebody talking like this. He says, I always imagine myself to be a female in this act. So this initially did not make sense to me, at least. He says, there's a devil within me. Uh, however, I work, however, I think that I should not be uh, affected or attracted towards porn. But there is a devil within me, which provokes me to get attracted towards porn. I feel disgusted with myself. I am not able to accept myself. He says, I love being in a cocoon. Hmm? So this was his language. I love being in a cocoon. He says, it's like a cave. I feel very secured in that cave. So initially, you know, this word cocoon takes up prejudices, prejudice minds towards um, molars and all these energies, right? So initially we were, our mind was trained like that. But now as we grow further, we have to exp ask each and every word, and what is the experience of that cocoon? He says, it's like a cave. It's very secure. And then when I persisted with this experience of being in a cave and what is that security the cocoon is giving, he says, now when you're asking me this again and again, I can see that like Adam and Eve, they were kept in paradise by God. He says, I am getting that image, you know, like they were given the best of everything in uh, in that paradise. You know, God had created a special place for them and they were given best of the things, good food, good nutritious water, and they everything was given to them on platter. So there was no ugliness of the world there. There was no sickness. There was no darkness. So now these words are taking us deeper and they are giving us a bigger glimpse of what he's experiencing. So he says there was no ugliness of the world, no sickness, no darkness. It was only bliss. It was only happiness. It had no pain. There was only a comfort zone. The weather too, there was very good. It was a very peaceful weather. The wind was blowing. So, you know, the image he gives, he says, it's like, it's like the Buddha, he was enjoying that place. So he says, I love to be like that. I, I don't want to be um, thinking of anything else than this bliss. So this is how we understand now what he is exactly talking of. So what is the opposite of this cocoon? 
Hmm? This was the next question which I had to ask. What is the opposite of cocoon? Because obviously he was trying to create a cocoon for himself. He says many of the times I just don't do anything and I want to experience this. So in vacations also, he says, the only thing I do is experience this cocoon. So now I wanted to understand what is opposite of this and what is he that he is not prepared for? What is he escaping from? So he says that they were detached from all the efforts. Here you have to put efforts to earn your bread and butter. The life over there was like a king. You got everything on platter. Here you have to go out in the world to earn your bread and butter. So here lies his level of development. Here lies his struggle. Here lies his dis-ease. So he was not easy going out in the world and you have to go through the hardships of life. So again, he comes to the French painting. He says, he says, I had seen a painting in a museum. It was of Adam and Eve. Sex had lured them and had brought them down. He says, I always have this weighing scale and I'm always trying to judge whether sex is good or bad. He says, till now I have not been able to decide. He says, as I work further, he has completed his BSc filmmaking. And he says, as I work further, I want to make a movie on sex education. Because this is what has ruined my life. I have wasted so much. I have wasted so much time in this issue. Now I want to spread awareness through my film. So this is what he, his thoughts were about sex. So he seems to be judging this. You know, he says, I always have this weighing scale with me and I'm not able to judge whether sex is good or bad. And now after the medicine, even he has made a movie on sex education. So he has been able to do what he was not able to do before. He says, it is just in my thoughts, but I'm not able to execute. I'm not able to put it in action. So this was his uh, problem that even after doing uh, BSc filmmaking, he was not able to take up any job. He was not able to go further. He was just stuck there. He says, I'm just waiting for a big uh, a call from a big company like Yash Chopra's and all. So here I had to explain that you have to start small, but he, he was in his own fantasy land. He was just waiting for a call from very brick production house. And he was just wasting his time. And because he was free, he was more into a, is in this form. So this was the um, painting he was talking about. Here we see that we know this biblical story of Adam and Eve. This is the forbidden fruit. This is where uh, he is lured by. This is the devil. We can see this thing. So this is the devil which is luring them to take this fruit. And here they are banished and there is fall from grace. So this is the story of Adam and Eve. He says, I don't feel that I have feet on my ground. I have always pain in my legs. I don't feel connected. I don't feel connected to everybody around. I don't have much friends. Even if I have friends, I'm not able to communicate pro properly. I'm lacking in communication skills. He says, if I talk to somebody, always there is a judgment behind me that am I talking well? Am I talking so that they are not hurt? Am I able to express properly? He says, always if I speak few words, I have that judgment that whether I should speak this way or that way. I should use this word or that word. So this was that uh, critical analytic thing in him, which was coming out even in communication. And because of that, he said, I'm lacking communication skills and I don't have good friends. And that again made him very lonely and disconnected from the world.
So this was his problem. Although he had these instincts, he was into pornography, but he was not able to decide whether sex is good or bad. And he had this weighing scale with him always. So now I had to ask him, what is the experience of porn according to you? So this is what we do in our case stickings. We go further beyond our own prejudices of things. We just give them the word and we exactly see how they express that whole thing to us. So for him, it is very forceful. Porn in porn, he says it's a very forceful act without any love. It is very animalistic. It is violation of others' rights. Here he talks about violation of others' light, rights. It is violation of their happiness. He says, I have made a strict rule. You have to make boundaries. You should not watch unethical things. He says, I have more bandwidth of ethics. You should be happy doing things. It, the things should be, it should not be inhuman. It should, the, the act of the pornography, it's not human. It's very hurtful and it is without consent. He says these girls are bought without consent. Their life is from 18 to 24 years and out after 24 years, they are out of business because you're not needed there. So he says your knees become weak and they are practically out of work and their life is finished. So he says then their life becomes hell. So on one end, what we saw was he saw heaven where it was absolute bliss, where you were in that domain of God, you were in the area of God, where everything was provided. And now he's talking about hell. So this is his experience of porn. He says, I have made strict rules that you have, to take, you have to set boundaries. I don't want to watch it. It is okay for the websites to do all this. It is okay for people who do all this. But I have my own horizons as per ethics. I will not judge those websites. It's okay for people to do whatever they want. But it is me. It is my ethics. So it, everyone has to set their horizons as per their ethics. So he says, I have made this rule that I'll never visit these websites. But there is something within me again, which, like he said initially, that there is a devil within me, which again and again takes me to those sites. And this was his exact conflict. On the one hand, one hand, there were too many rules he has set for himself. On the other hand, these were, he was breaking those rules. And that is why he was not feeling good about himself. So how do you see it? Porn, porn is violation of one's being, one's existence. Their consent, their happiness is not considered. You are forced to do this or you are conditioned. He says you are conditioned. People tell you that, you know, it's okay. You are blackmailed. Sometimes you are brainwashed and you are made to do this under pressure. So porn is complete violation of their being. He says one should not judge, but I do judge these things. So one should have ethics which suit your personality. And that is where he was always breaking these ethics, which he thought he had to have within him. So he also says that the in porn, you are not accepted by society. People who do this work, when they come out of work, you are not accepted by society. So again, there is a theme of acceptance from the society which is coming up. So what is your idea of sex? I asked him, okay, this should not be done, but what is your idea of sex? He said, in um, porn, it is very... It is not sacred. There is no love. You are only doing it for flesh. In love, it has to be spiritual. The love has to be spiritual. It has to come out of respect, mutual respect, dignity. And you have to express your inner being and inner sacredness through sex. But in porn, it's opposite. You're being selfish. You're only thinking of yourself. 
but in love you express love in many ways and one of the ways in which you express love should be sex where there has to be a mutual consent and not forceful so again this thing is coming up that it was very forceful and violation of laws and your personal space and boundaries the society conditions you he says there is so much conditioning up around this topic which the society does he says you are not allowed to talk about sex openly in our society he says if i'm uh, like i i cannot talk to this this problem with my mother otherwise i would have sorted this off long before long back you know if i would have uh, you know if if it if it was allowed in the society if it it was uh promoted you know to talk openly about sex about your issues regarding sex i would have easily communicated communicated this to my mother and she would have sorted out this problem but because the society is not conditioned that we can talk about sex openly he says my mother does if my mother doesn't like anything i don't like that so my mother doesn't like sex this is what i feel so she doesn't talk about it and that's why he had this wrong misconceptions around this issue so he says in sex two people come together and they create they create a beautiful being and here he gave me a story of parvati ji creating ganesha so that was his standards of love you know where you are sacred and you create something out of that sacredness and you're totally pure so he says there is a devil within me i have suppressed this devil this is a part within me i feel sick it is in this sick this in in uh, in porn this is exaggerated and it is sickness so i don't enjoy this but i am still addicted so he says am i a hypo hypocrite doctor on one end i know what it is but still i can't stop myself uh going to to these websites and watching and he says i waste hours and hours i waste around 4 to 5 hours in a day watching this and doing nothing so he is not able to do anything because of this he is not able to think think about his future he is not able to think about his job so he says my mind i feel my mind is always bound i don't feel free i want to become free like others i want to be like others i see how they work in college and they enjoy the evenings i also feel guilty because i have not started earning he says for me to complete that assignment is a big big task and i see people completing those tasks very easily and they can even enjoy in the evenings but neither i can complete my task nor i can enjoy the evenings because i, I always have this feeling within me that i'm not free he says i have this guilt that i'm spending my parents money also when he was he tried to do a script like a writing workshop but what he did was he after a lot of motivation initially i asked him to do something so he uh, did a script writing workshop but he wrote it in the brochure i'll return the money if you don't think it is worth your time and money so he just charged 300 and he booked some place and he arranged everything but he wrote on the brochure he says i like this idea of he says i had attended a workshop and this was uh, written on the when i attended that workshop and he says this is a very idealistic way of doing so even i'll do so he did this and he practically didn't earn anything out of that workshop <clears throat> so we see how this person is so naive so not grounded he is totally idealistic so we see a naive person who is totally idealistic over here <clears throat> so now how do we analyze the case we have to in pm we are seeing that where he is stuck in his level of development what is his inner age so we we have this pem understanding of how to see this case we can see this case from many perspectives 
but today i'll be sharing this case from pem understanding so how i saw this person as <clears throat> he has he is talking about the concept of hell and heaven so this was his hell and this is his heaven where if the weather is good and there is air and you don't have to work for anything and hell is you have to work for your bread and butter and he says it's so heated outside you don't get fresh air so this concept of hell and heaven is being seen in his um, talking also what we see here is development of super ego there is a question of morality everywhere we see that even in, in his work even in his addictions there is a question of morality whether this is good or bad how much of this is good or bad you know he's talking about sacredness he's talking about the society so here's too much judgment of self and others what we see here is that his ego is developed and we see super ego over here so this is how we see our charts we have three charts with us plant mineral and animal so the journey starts from being egoless to being too much egoistic you know so this is a journey from having no borders to having very strong borders so the cursor moves here from the column 1 to column 6 we have this how strong is your ego how much ego strength you have hmm? so this is where what we see that we have to see in our chart where exactly the super ego develops hmm? so this is our chart here we have column 1 which is magnolidae we have column 2 which is hemamelidae then we have caryophyllidae subclass 4 is dilidae subclass 5 is rosidae and subclass 6 is asteridae so here what we see that we have this gestation feminine over here and then we have after birth masculine so here we have to see that now what he is talking about he is talking about the super ego means he is in subclass 5 this here we see this rosy day we can also see earth over here so he has problems with grounding he has to ground here and he this talk about money and building up his own job working here working earning your own bread and butter this is the earth element so in pem we have concepts like yin and yang we have concept of elements we see how this elemental play is there in a person we also see how much feminine and how much masculine you we are we have to embody both femininity and masculinity within us and we should be able to function in balance harmoniously but that normally doesn't happen either we are too feminine too giving or we are too masculine so what he says here is that since childhood i have seen myself as a female hmm? i have acted as a feminine and he is into now he is talking about both so we are seeing that this feminine is now just reversing and it is coming towards masculine so this is the exact place where the twist is happening hmm? so this is where what we see in subclass 5 the masculine is developing masculine means the development of borders before we are in water we are in we are, we are totally borderless we don't have our borders but when we come to earth we separate from this water and we start forming these boundaries so in subclass 5 we see that these boundaries are being developed but in the initial phases this boundaries are so weak that they can be easily penetrated so we can see this is subclass 5 we can also see that this is early stages of subclass 5 it is not the, we have this coal we have in this rosy day we have rosales we have myrtles we have fabels malfigials geraniums then we have viol violales euphorbials sapindels so this cool age here we have anacardium where this split is maximum here we are just separating that split is being created so this dynamics of subclass 5 is super ego 
then guilt and then punishment we heard all these words in this case he was talking about how he is too judgmental how he is having too many moral ethics how he is more ethical than others how his he has a great the words he chose was i have a band my bandwidth of morality ethics is different from others means i am more moral than others right so he has the super ego he has because of this super ego the guilt comes in so when we are children when we are small even we do something we do we are not guilty about it you know because we don't have that super ego which acts like a censor which acts like a moral policeman within us and there is after that guilt there is a issue of punishment so this dynamics is seen in subclass 5 this is school age subclass 5 of the plan here what we have rules morals punishment so in subclass 5 masculine quality starts developing which creates a split between the feminine and masculine so we have issues with relationships we have issues with companionship we have issues with partnership the other the father so school age is the time where the role of father comes into play till that you are under the feminine womb you know the your home is the womb the extended womb where you are provided everything and you are just given everything unconditionally but once you go out of that home which is his womb a place of bliss where he is not criticized where he is not judged when you come outside in the society you have to deal with the other you have to deal with people around you have to have relationships you have to have companionship you have to have partnership so this involves includes rules and regulations which the father teaches so here the role of father means the masculine comes into play and that is where we see this subclass 5 so we have all these themes rules boundaries he talked about boundaries also then we have this dogmatic religion religion is a thing which teaches human how to be in a society what rules and regulations are how what are the do's and don'ts how to behave in a society so here we have religion so this can get because of that over strictness or the excess boundaries which come in the later stages of this subclass we have fanatism we have rigidity and then there is suppression of the feminine means suppression of the emotions this is the place where cognition develops so for time being the feminine is shadowed and that is where the conflict occurs this gets maximum in enacardium that is where we see the exact split of enacardium the devil and the angel so there hierarchy and criticism also are the themes of this subclass work ambition life path and purpose this is what you think and this is the earth element of subclass 5 and you need limbs and joints to go out of your home and most of the time the pathology which develops here is limbs and joint what he said was that my weak my i don't feel my feet grounded on earth i feel weak in my knees i have weakness in my limbs so most of the time when we work with pem we see this interplay between the physical and um, the developmental stage and the physical stage and and because of that we are able to work with physical pathologies more beautifully we can see in the chart we can zoom in and zoom out and we can see in the chart how the physical pathology also matches with the level of development so this is the split me and the other taking one's own path finding your lost heart love and relationship lost heart means i told you feminine is subdued because the emotion have to be subdued so that the cognition is developed so you have to take your heart the lesson of this is you have to take your heart along with your mind hmm? along with your cognition so me consciousness and the super ego facing the masculine principle which is the boundaries hmm? here you have to strict boundaries you have to separate from this feminine element 
it's time of the father. So either a dominating father, like we see in Ennacardium, we have a history of very dominating father or an absent father in the early stage. In this case, the father is almost absent. The child doesn't go. He says, I have no relationship with my father. I don't understand his ways of working. So rules, regulations, rigidity, work being defined by your own achievements. I am what I do in the world. It's making your way in the world. So here he says, I don't have any achievements yet. That's, that also put him very down. So in column five, a slip, a split is formed as masculine, princi masculine principle separates itself totally from the feminine, feminine principle suppresses it and begins to be active component of ego construction. The role of masculine quality is to create a separation, a boundary that will assist in establishing a well-defined ego. So now, what is this devil here? This is the masculine principle which is taking over the feminine and this masculine principle is seen as something which will take over me and that is why we have a famous rubric of this remedy, which I'll be coming shortly. So now we have worked out the column and what we saw that because the masculine principle is not that strong, we have rows and we have to work out the rows here. So what we see that he, this is row four, which is preschool age. This is early childhood. So what is what do we do in early childhood? We have this playfulness and curiosity. We have this taking initiative versus indifference and being stuck, which exactly what he was talking. There is problems at the level of functionality, investigating the world, permeating the world through dismantling it. So this is a time when the child is curious about the, the you know, like, uh, this is a female, this is a male. And, you know, in, in childhood, what we do, we play games. We, we have seen many children playing games of doctor, doctor. What they do is that they just try to explore this difference of genitalia. So this is a curiosity and playfulness which makes this person more attracted towards sex. It's just a curiosity. So the sex here in row four is not the adult sex. It is a child's imagination and curiosity of sex which makes him prone towards sexual abuse. So we also have a remedy of Aristolochiasi in first subclass which is a main remedy for sexual abuse in children. This is a story. So the remedy given here was the Mancinella which is also called as the forbidden fruit. So the fourth row theme of penetration expresses in Mancinella as a feeling that something is going to take them over. So that is what he was talking in pornography, that there is a forceful penetration because their boundaries are not that well developed. They feel that there is a forceful penetration. The other is invading her boundaries. The masculine principle is threatening to cross boundaries and take them over. This was the whole case and the remedy given was mancinella, which is interestingly the forbidden fruit, the apple of mancinella, which was eaten by Adam and Eve and which led them to be banished from the Eden garden, the paradise. So how everything comes into sync. So here we also have this rubric in Mancinella, delusion, imagination, devil, devil's possessed of is. Then we have male sexual libido, libido excessive children in. Now we understand why it is excess. Excessive children in puber puberty and the only remedy is Mancinella. There's fear of being punished, which we talked why it is. So now we are understanding why of each and every rubric. Hmm? Fear of being punished, we have Mancinella. Also, there is a rubric which is celibacy, obsessed with the idea of the single remedy, single remedy is Mancinella. So if a case comes us with this presentation, we can understand now why this rubric is there. Because sex is seen as something which is forceful. Sex is not pure. It is a forceful violation of boundaries. And that is why we have this single remedy here, which is Mancinella. So everything comes together, the rubrics, the uh, story, the folklore of Adam and Eve, 
and the mancinal apple, the source and the stages of evolution. So this is the case and this is how we understand. So we have a different way of case taking. Some We have some more questions which need to be asked. We have to see this interplay of feminine and masculine. So now with this uh, understanding, I understood why he was a feminine, why he loves cooking, why he loves to be with his mother, why he is influenced so much with the mother, because he is in that feminine boom and he's now he's trying to separate from the feminine. So he cooks for his mother. He doesn't want to go out without his mother. He, he did not want to take a job outside in Mumbai because he would be separated from the mother, which he did after the dose. So after the dose, the first change in him, he saw, he told me, ma'am, now I'm feeling more masculine. Now my penis size is increasing. I'm feeling muscular in this shoulders. So it was so beautiful to see that, you know, that masculine principle is now taking over and now he's ready for the world. So every word now makes a sense. So now we are coming up with PM courses from 13th of June, 2002-03. We'll be teaching all these concepts, the concept of yin and yang, the concept of elements. We'll be teaching these charts individually. We'll be teaching the concept of ego, superego, the development through Freudian and Jungian philosophies. So the course will be of six months and the advanced course is for, for 12 months. So it will be basic plus six months extra in which we'll be brainstorming with cases solved with be a method, different, different cases solved with different pathologies and also some psychiatric disorders. So this will be the syllabus. This is Dr. Mahesh Gandhi. He's the founder of this method. From every Tuesday, starting from 13th of June, the timings will be 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. The recordings will be given for, I will just let you know the time. It will be more than a month. The recordings will be given. And Dr. Gandhi will be coming. This These sessions will be taken by the IPEMA team, but we'll be getting full support system from Dr. Gandhi. If there are any queries and if he feels that the group needs more, he'll be, he will be pleased and happy to come and solve our problems and he can take some of the sessions also. So this is a course which we are looking forward to share with you all. This is a, There will be 26 lectures, one every week. So these are the lectures. So thank you so much for being with us. We'll be shortly sharing the fees. Now we have Dr. Elmut from Berlin. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for being with us. If there are any queries, just mail. Uh, at Dr. Meeta Nilani at gmail.com. We after we'll be sharing every we'll be sharing one case every week and we can take all your questions together and we'll come as a team and answer. And Dr. Gandhi will also be there for all question and answers. So thank you so much. Thank you for being with us and stay tuned to our IPMA group. It's a WhatsApp group where we share, uh, where we keep on sharing our experiences and we'll be uh, sharing our cases every week there will be one case solved case so thank you so much and stay tuned to the group thank you